Uh, Karsten Mueller uh, has a question. Since our schools, colleges, and universities do not teach our kids or teenagers critical thinking, how can we animate them to do so? Any thoughts or ideas? Yes. How can we animate them to do so? Um, I'm going to go for tan, I guess, because I think one of the ways that we animate them to do so is um, is is by animating people to do so. Um all of this stuff is coming to me quickly, and I'm get, I'm going to get to the specifics of your question for a change. Um, but it's 2018. I started doing videos in 2008, so I've been at this for 10 years now. And not only has uh, not only have I changed, not only has the world changed, and the messages and so on, the audience has changed, and not just the audience, the entire focus, the entire spotlight, the, the, what's the word I'm looking for? Like the cultural epicenter, the pulse is in a different place now. And part of this, uh, recent scarcity of, uh, firewalls is a realization that, um, is that they are not as effective as they used to be. And I've also done 300 of them, but they're not as effective as they used to be. And every day it gets more and more like this. And every day um, I find more and more uh, that we need to dramatically shorten the content. And we have to do something to hold people's attention. And that means doing to them what they've been doing to us for so many years, uh, Karsten. Um, so if, if, as you say, if our schools, our colleges, and our universities don't teach our kids our, or teenagers critical thinking, then how can we animate them to do so? Any thoughts? This goes to some of the things I mentioned um, with uh, Story uh, in, in the last right angle. Now, last week, directly related to this, last week um, Scott pitched a show on, wanted to do a, a his right angle segment on the greatest showman on a movie, which he liked a lot. And in that segment, we talked a lot about story and we talked about the power of story and, and how for any kind of a culture, it's garbage in and garbage out, right? You, you, you make movies like It's a Wonderful Life and about good people and people watch those movies and they feel good and you create good citizens. It's how it works. I'm sure you remember Oliver Stone's classic, It's a Meaningless Life and the effect that had on you in terms of making you want to jump off the bridge rather than stay on it. So... Um, story, 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 story. In any event, Scott did this episode on The Greatest Showman, and he raved about it and said, you go see it. And so I thought, okay, great. Well, you know, every now and then we do a right angle that we can just kind of throw away just for fun. God knows Scott has, um, has been working so hard forever, and if he thinks he wants to talk about this movie, that's just great. So then uh, two nights ago, or three, I lose track so easily, uh, Natasha and I, uh, two nights ago, went to see The Greatest Showman. And so this week, for my right angle topic, I decided I want to talk about The Greatest Showman. Uh, because having seen that movie, I am exactly on the same frequency as Scott Ott. And I will tell you now that I feel a moral obligation to get everybody to see that film. I, I, I feel a moral obligation to get people to see it. Uh, it's so perfectly made. It's so spectacularly made. And I've got a pretty good sense of rhythm, believe it or not. And you've heard me talk about the um, safety video for um, Virgin America and how much I love that and the, and the music and the, and the percussion and, 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 and all the rest of it. Um, and this movie was so powerful that you just are just smashed by it. And, and how do we not take advantage of this? This is Excalibur. I think I said this on the, on the right angle show. This is Excalibur lying on the grass. The Lady of the Lake arose from the, from the mists of Avalon and laid it in our hands, and we just chucked it over our shoulder and start fashioning a slingshot. It's just insane. There is... Um, 
The Greatest Showman is so positive and does so much good. Uh, I told Natasha when we came out, I said, the funny thing about that movie is I feel like I just got a, a shot of a vitamin that I desperately needed, but I didn't know that I needed it until after I got it. Um, so it's all about the story. And critical thinking is a skill that has to be taught, but it has to be taught through story. It has to be simple. Uh, we spent, I think, the previous two episodes, not, not so much last week. Yeah, maybe it was last week. I don't remember now. I never remember. Uh, talking about this, um, this road I took where I thought for about, I don't know, three or four days, I was convinced that the um, Earl of Oxford, Edward de Vere, had written all of Shakespeare's plays. And there was a compelling case to be made for that. And then I read the other side of the case, and the other side of the case is overwhelming. So when you show one half of the story, you can get people to believe you. But when you show them both halves of the story, you find out that they're not really two halves of the story, that the, that the um, Oxfordian story is a tiny, tiny subset of the bigger story. And once you start telling the bigger story, the little story seems unlikely. So um, this, is, uh, this is how we have to do it. We're in a... This is all, I, it's probably going to be the theme for tonight, might be the theme for the year, to be honest with you. We are, we are in deep trouble. And we had better start using all of the, the tools that we have available, or else we're going to stay in deep trouble. And we're in deep trouble because nobody... Who, who needs to hear the message has the attention span to hear the message. If you've got the attention span to sit down and listen to something for five minutes or read a book, you're not a problem. It's probably, you're probably going to be fine. Um, so um, you, have to, you have to use the, the mechanisms and you have to use the tools to reach the audience as it exists, not the way you want it to exist. So while I'd love to do a, a half an hour thing or a 10 minute thing or a seven minute firewall on critical thinking, it's, you know, the people who need to see it aren't going to watch it. Uh, so it has to be broken down into a series of little things. And we'll basically think of it as comic books. I mean, really, that's where we are right now. I said, we're in trouble, we're in trouble. We have to basically try and bring people back from the comic book world and the only way to do it is through comic books. I think that's pretty much the whole thesis. So, uh, as I said last uh, a couple weeks ago, I think uh, Karsten Mueller, did I say Miller? If I did, I apologize. Um, universities and colleges, I am now convinced, are so badly um, infected that I don't think they're redeemable. And, and the good news is I don't think they need to be redeemed. I think, I think a, a, a brick-and-mortar education is soon going to be, um, you know, it's going to be like a wagon wheel or whatever. It's not going to mean anything. It already doesn't mean anything in most, most professions, especially today, given the quality of people. I mean, if you, if you, I would, without, without question, without question, you wouldn't even have to, I wouldn't have to meet the people. I would just do it automatically and be right 99 times out of 100. If you gave me a military veteran who's 17, 18, let's say, let's say I got a 20-year-old uh, vet uh, who is a, uh, a, a petty officer or, or something or a corporal, and, and I had a 20-year-old who'd graduated from Harvard, uh, I would take the vet every single time because the Harvard education isn't what it used to be. I want somebody who knows how to show up on time and who works hard uh, and who's willing to learn and is not so educated that they are convinced they don't have anything left to learn. So that's the idea, is just make it simple and, um, and, and a word that just flew into my head I like very much. Make it simple and make it percussive Make it, make it, boom, you know, hit and out. And then let people think about it afterwards. So that's basically what we have to do. The, the, the thing about The Greatest Showman is 
all of the messages in there, and it's there's a lot of stuff in there that is just terrific. Uh, it is um, it's a it's a story about ambition and and dreams and hard work and getting up again after failure and taking a risk and all the things that we really admire, setting up a business and making it happen. So. All of that is there, but I could stand there and, and do 500 of these things in front of the exact same audience and not have anything like the effect that you have watching a, a great actor and a, and a really nice guy like Hugh Jackman basically spend you tw two hours and you, you're done. You're, you, you understand it in your brainstem. You don't have to think about it. This is the way we have to go. And the hard part is convincing, uh, first of all, convincing uh people that it's the way to go and then secondly convincing them to part with the money because unfortunately these things do not happen by themselves they are productions they're commodities just like healthcare, and they have to be paid for so that's the challenge for 2018.